This is the eighth in the series of computer science lessons about wireless communication and digital signal processing. In this lesson, you'll learn about quadrature amplitude modulation, known more simply as QAM. QAM is one of the most versatile modulation techniques. It's used in most high-speed data transfer applications, including Wi-Fi, mobile phones, cable TV, and fiber optic networks. QAM can achieve some of the highest possible data rates by combining amplitude modulation with phase modulation. Before continuing, it would be worth familiarizing yourself with some of the other modulation techniques that were described in previous lessons, including amplitude modulation, QPSK, and 8PSK. By varying both the phase and the amplitude of a carrier wave, it's possible to transmit considerably more data for a given bandwidth. 16 QAM, for example, has 16 unique waveforms. And because there are 16 of them, each symbol is a combination of four binary digits. Line coding is crucial when it comes to QAM. To generate a 16 QAM signal, the digital data stream is handled four binary digits at a time. Each group of four bits is split into two groups of two. The two most significant bits are referred to as Q and Q prime, and the least two significant bits as I and I prime. I and I prime are sent to an electronic component called a two to four level converter. Simultaneously, Q and Q prime are sent to another two to four level converter. Each two to four level converter takes two bits as input, and depending on which of four possible combinations of one and zero it receives, outputs one of four possible voltages. At the top converter of this diagram, I determines the polarity of the output, that is, whether it's positive or negative. A binary one results in a negative output, whereas a binary zero makes it positive. I prime determines the magnitude of the output. In this example, binary one results in a magnitude of three volts, binary zero outputs one volt. At the lower converter, Q determines the polarity of the output and Q prime determines the magnitude. These tables summarize the outputs of the level converters according to the input combinations. A stream of data bits like this, for example, once encoded, would result in two separate baseband signals, like these. If the data are destined to be transmitted via radio, pulse shaping can be applied to the baseband signals at this stage. For simplicity, we'll continue without going into the details of pulse shaping. That's covered in a previous lesson. The output of each level converter is then passed to a mixer. Meanwhile, an oscillator generates a carrier wave which is duplicated and a phase shift of 90 degrees is applied to the copy. The carriers are therefore in quadrature. What happens now is very much like QPSK modulation. The carriers are modified accordingly, and the outputs from the mixers are added together by a linear summer to produce a unique waveform for each group of four bits. The amplitude and phase of the resulting waveform can be calculated using trigonometry. The exact values depend on the way the level converters have been set up. A constellation diagram provides an intuitive way to visualize the 16 possible waveforms and the symbols they represent. Each waveform is shown as a constellation point, and each point represents a vector. The length of the vector corresponds to the amplitude of the waveform, while the angle corresponds to the phase. If you watched the previous lesson, you've probably noticed the similarity between QAM and 8PSK. They are indeed very similar. A key difference, however, is that an 8PSK transmitter generates waveforms whose amplitudes are all the same. A QAM transmitter takes advantage of the fact that they are not all the same. 
The output voltages of the level converters are specifically chosen to ensure that the QAM constellation points are equally spaced out. Signal attenuation and noise can cause changes in the amplitude and phase of the signal, making it more difficult for the receiver to distinguish one symbol from another. The bigger the spacing of the constellation points, the lower the chance of bit errors. But bigger spacing needs more power and more bandwidth. A big advantage of QAM over other modulation techniques is the way that it can be scaled up. By applying the same principles, we can build a 64 QAM system. This time, each of 64 unique symbols encodes a combination of 6 bits. However, the chance of bit errors is higher, so more power is needed to ensure adequate separation of the constellation points. 256 QAM takes things even further. This system encodes 8 bits per symbol. Wi-Fi 6 even makes use of 1024 QAM with 10 bits per symbol. But as the number of symbols and the data transmission rate increases, so do the power and the bandwidth requirements. When it comes to radio signals, power output and bandwidth are limited by law, if nothing else. Higher orders of QAM also require more expensive equipment and the much greater possibility of transmission errors increases the reliance on error detection and error correction protocols. Depending on the conditions, higher orders of QAM are more likely to result in a poor signal quality. Nonetheless, modern wireless communication systems are adaptive and will automatically switch between BPSK, QPSK and various orders of QAM as and when they need to.